Welcome back to the Budget Gamer channel where we bring you critical and in-depth reviews of just about every indie game we can get our hands on. And today we're going to be taking a look at Child of Light for the Nintendo Switch. And if you have heard of Child of Light, yes it was actually released several years ago on nearly every console imaginable, but as with most indies that are ported over to the Switch, this version includes all of the content that has been released so far. And while that definitely includes a few new visual touches, such as costumes for your main character, it also includes completely new characters and completely new quests. Diving into the story of Child of Light, though, the entire game takes place in Austria in the late 1800s. Our main character, Aurora's mother, has passed away several years ago, and her noble father has recently taken a new wife. However, not too long after that, on the eve of Easter, Aurora was found still and lifeless in her bed, and has now found herself to have woken up in a very strange and mystical environment. And after a very short period of what might be considered almost a prelude chapter a very light platforming and puzzling, a bit more about our situation is revealed that gives us that intrinsic investment to keep playing on through the end of the game. More or less, the world that Aurora has just found herself in has been tormented by the evil queen Umbra. And this evil queen has tormented the land and stripped the three sources of light, the sun, the moon, and the stars, and plunged all of the inhabitants into chaos. And as luck would have it, along with a magical sword and a somewhat talkative firefly, Aurora might actually be this entire realm's only hope. But as far as the gameplay is concerned, though Child of Light definitely resembles a 2D puzzle platformer, it's more of an open exploration game. You will be limited to a 2D environment, but after that opening prologue chapter, you gain the ability to fly, which opens up a whole new realm of the game's exploration, not only horizontal, but vertical. And as the gameplay will always be pushing us further and further to try and reach Umbra's floating castle in the sky, there will be dozens of opportunities to help out the earthbound denizens of this realm, engaging in new quest lines, and even gaining new party members, so each area is expectedly large. However, while platforming is pretty much negated by the ability to fly, there are slight puzzle elements that will remain in the game that may have you navigating through tricky areas or stretching your brain a little bit to figure out how to open certain locks. However, nothing is too terribly intense, so it does leave the player more time to explore and really soak up some of the gorgeous scenery. However, while you find yourself scouring every single dark corner of the map for the lore collectibles called Confessions, or any of the myriad of hidden chests that can hold potions or gems, you'll definitely be running into a large wealth of enemies. Thankfully though, the enemy encounter system isn't random, which does let you choose how you want to engage or if you want to engage at all. As this is most definitely an RPG, every single character has their own stats of attack, defense, magic resistance, and what have you, but the one that plays the biggest role in combat is arguably the speed stat. The first portion of the bar is the waiting portion, which any character with a higher amount of native speed is going to progress through faster. However, the last red portion of the bar focuses purely on which type of attack you're using. Spells and attacks can have cast times of short, medium, long, very long, and each one of these will determine how fast you progress through that small red portion of the bar. And while getting a handle on this dynamic will definitely help you gauge who might be able to attack first, an interrupt system has also been worked into the game. So should you be able to attack an enemy who's currently waiting on their attack to cast, it'll interrupt them and throw them about halfway down the wait bar. In addition to other spells which might be able to boost allies or sap enemies, one third dynamic has been thrown into the game as well. In the general gameplay, your Firefly buddy will help you to light paths and even unlock certain puzzles. However, in battle, when you're restricted to only having two party members engaged in combat at a time, your Firefly pal can really act as a third teammate. Moving your Firefly over toward an enemy and shining light on them with the LZ trigger will slow them down regardless of where they are in their battle progression. But if you move the Firefly over to any of your own characters and again hold down the Z trigger to shine light on them, they'll slowly recover their health. And should you be able to get a good handle on this system, you can prevent enemies from ever attacking and keep your own party members hanging on without ever using a recovery spell or a potion. But if controlling your own character as well as managing a tiny firefly as you explore the overworld and run through quests, or as you manage your party in battle seems to be a little bit too much to handle, you can always just hand off one of your Joy-Cons to a friend and let them control the firefly by themselves. And yes, by saying that, I do mean that the game is actually two-player. However, moving away from the combat dynamics, Child of Light is full of all sorts of elements that any fans of JRPGs are really going to enjoy. And this includes a minor crafting system that lets you augment your weapons and armor with gems that you can find and combine along your gameplay, as well as a very diversified skill tree system. However, if you were wondering about how to develop the skill trees of a massive party when only two players can participate in combat at a time, Child of Light actually awards an equivalent amount of experience points to every single player in your party, not just to those that actually participate in the fight. 
And as the game's environments change visually as you play and make your way further and further across the map, the enemies will change as well with different elemental weaknesses and strengths. So having a combat experience system that levels up every party member you have access to consistently provides a huge advantage to making sure you always have access to that party member which may be the most advantageous for that particular situation. It should be obvious by watching the game footage at this point that Child of Light is definitely a beautiful game. And its musical score, its soundtrack, its voiceovers, and its scripting are all really well done. However, despite the intricacies of its actual combat mechanics, its leveling up system, and its skill trees, there is a bit of a disparity between the two. However, if you do feel that the combat lacks just a little bit in comparison to its beautiful visuals and its story, you can go into the menus and change the game's difficulty to an expert mode that may just solve that problem. All in all though, I'd have to say that Child of Light, even though it was released several years ago for nearly every single system, is still a great game even today. It's a beautiful experience for anyone who hasn't actually played it, and if you're not playing it for its beauty or its story, it's still a really solid adventure game. And as an 8-12 to hour adventure, not only is it totally worth the sale price, but there is a physical release out there for any collectors. But anyway, that does about wrap up the review of Child of Light on the Nintendo Switch, so if you enjoyed the review or found it helpful, feel free to throw me a comment or a like to show your support. And don't forget to click that little bell icon when you subscribe to stay updated with the latest content. There are new and unique indies coming out literally every single day, so there's always going to be something new to find right here. But since I can only cover a few games a week, if you want a heads up of which games might be coming out next to be reviewed, you can check out our new Discord server, which is linked at the bottom right corner of the channel's banner. But of course, if you have trouble finding it, you can always just message me or leave a comment below and I'll send you the link. But anyway, this has been Budget Gamer, so as always, thanks for watching.